In quadrilateral ABCD, E and F are points on BG and AD, respectively, and BGD and EGF are drawn such that angle ABG is congruent to CDG, AB is congruent to CD, and CE is congruent to AF. Our goal here is to prove that FG is congruent to EG. Let's take a look at how we can do this. So first, let's try and um, write down all the necessary givens into the statement column proof. So here it says that angle ABG, or actually BGD and BGD and EGF, they're straight lines. That is important. Uh, and then it says ABG is congruent to CDG. And AB is congruent to CD. And CE is congruent to AF. Okay. And these are all our givens. I want to use a slightly thinner... Yeah. Okay, so... Let's try to mark up the diagram here. So I know that um, immediately that ABG is congruent to CDG, right? ABG, CDG. So this angle over here is congruent to that angle there. That's the given. So as a result of this given, what I can then say is AB is parallel to CD. And what is this? What's the reason for AB being parallel to CD? Well, the reason is alternate interior angles converse. Why do I need to put in the word converse? Well, that is because if we're given a pair of parallel lines, then we can say um, the angles formed between the parallel lines and the transversal, um, the, uh, the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent, and that would be the alternate interior angle, and that would be the reason, because of alternate interior angles, right? But here, in this case, we're proving the lines parallel, so it would be the reversal of that, so that's why we have to add in the word converse. Now, why is that important? Because immediately, I see that um, we, can, we can go with uh, the next step, that, tri um, that quadrilateral ABCD is going to be a parallelogram. And how do I know that it's going to be a parallelogram? Well, I'm going to write it down first. So ABCD is a parallelogram. How do I know that? Well, I know this because I have one pair of sides are parallel and congruent. So I have one pair... of sides are parallel and congruent. Which pair of sides are we talking about here? We're talking about side A, B, and C, D, right? So lines 3 and 5. So anytime you have a pair of sides uh, in a quadrilateral where they are both parallel and congruent to one another, that is a theorem. That is that the um, quadrilateral that we're dealing with is a parallelogram. All right, so why is that important? Our goal is to show that FG is congruent to EG, right? These two segments over here, this set, whoops, so this segment, So this segment is congruent to that segment. I also notice right immediately, right, that I have a triangle here and a triangle there. We probably will need to prove those two triangles are going to be congruent 
before we can say anything else, okay, about those two corresponding sides. So that's going to be the approach that I'm going to take here. How am I going to do that? Well, um, I know uh, in, the, in the problem, in the given, we're told that EC is congruent to AF. And since we know that BC is going to be congruent to AD because opposite sides of a um, parallelogram are congruent, we can perform a segment addition postulate to prove that BE is congruent to FD. Okay, because we need a side, we need at least one side uh, to prove triangles congruent, right? If you recall, all the different methods for proving triangles congruent, we have side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, side, right? They, you need a minimum of one side, okay? So we're going to prove those two sides are congruent. Which sides again? BE and FD. Why can we not prove BG and GD? Because nothing says that FE is bisecting diagonal BD. That's why we can't do that, okay? So we're going to try and prove BE is congruent to FD. So how are we going to do that? Well, uh, I know that BE, I'm sorry, I know that BC is going to be congruent to AD. So line 7, BC is congruent to AD because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So the next step here, okay, on the regions, they don't make a big deal out of this, okay? But technically speaking, there is a slight difference between congruence and equality. And the difference between congruence and equality is the, um, you know, we, uh, everything about the two objects are the same in, which way, uh, in every which way. So therefore, we cannot add, um, like, objects but we can add their values, right? So there is a slight difference there, but I'm not going to approach it um, in, in that regard just because on the regions, they, um, the teacher's grading it. They, they're looking to see whether or not you understand the big picture here, which is what I'm trying to go for here as well. So I'm, not, I'm, going, to, I'm going to disregard the difference between congruence and equality and just apply the segment addition postulate um, in the form that they are being con that they're congruent and um, and approach it that way, okay? So BC is congruent to AD. I recognize my next step that BC is made up of um, is made up of what is made up of BE plus EC. And similarly, I can say that AD is made up of AF plus FD. And what's the reason for this? Well, this is because of segment addition postulate. Same thing. And since I know that um, that BC is congruent to AD, or again, BC is equal to AD in, in their measures, right? I can then perform a substitution. I can then say that since BC is equal to AD, I can say that BE it plus EC is equal to AF plus FD. And this is because of substitution. between which lines? I am substituting information from line 8 and 9 into line 7. Now, now that I have this, right, look at, look at the information that was given to us in the beginning. We were told that CE is congruent to AF, right? CE 
is the same thing as EC. So therefore, what we can do is I can subtract lines 10 and 4. So I'm going to subtract lines 10 minus line 4, right? And I'm going to write this just a little more accurately here. My apologies here. Instead of writing C, uh, EC, I'm going to write CE. And AF is fine. Okay. So now I want to subtract lines 10 and line 4 together. And what I'll be left with is BE is equal to... Um, BE is equal to FD. Right? Or I can say congruent. Right? I'm, I'm using congruence and equality interchangeably. And then line 12, what I can say is... Um, since I know uh, the BC and AD are sides of a parallelogram, I can say BC and AD are parallel. Because opposite sides of a parallelogram Are, are parallel. Why is this information needed? Well, that's because I, I've proven one side already, right? I need now two different angles, either two angles that are adjacent to one another or, um, or two angles that form um, the side that I've just proven congruent. So what I'm going to do, now that I've established that BC and AD are parallel, I can then say that angle EBG is going to be parallel to FDG. So angle EBG is going to be congruent to FDG. And this is because of alternate interior angles are congruent. I don't have to add the word converse there because, you know, that, that was the theorem that if you have a pair of parallel lines cut by a transversal, we're going to have alternate interior angles congruent. So I have an angle now. I need one other angle. And I'm going to use the um, BGE, the vertical angle. So angle BGE is congruent to angle FGD. And this is because of vertical angles. And now I have everything in place. I have uh, for number 15, okay, I can then say triangle BGE is congruent to triangle FGD because of angle side angle angle side right so again how is that angle angle side because I've just proven these two angles are congruent and then these sides here are congruent that's angle angle side alright and now that I have these two triangles are congruent I can then say uh, what I was set out to Prove, which was FG is congruent to EG. Right? Actually, it should be the other way around. So I can say that EG is congruent to FG. And this is because of uh, CPCTC. Okay. B G E and oh, um, it should say D G F. I got it backwards. It should say D G F. Okay. So therefore, um, I can say because I have to make my statement match. Uh, 
what we're trying to prove. This is symmetric property. Okay, and that's it. This was actually a pretty lengthy proof for the regents. Not surprised, but this was the last question anyway.